Good morning and welcome to St. George's and to our Mother's Day service. It's also the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. We have a special service for you today for Mother's Day. It's being led by the women of our congregation and it includes talks by some of the mothers of our parish about what it means to be a mother and a Christian. We hope you enjoy the service and that you will join in the songs and the prayers. The words will be on your screen. So let's start our worship. We gather together to worship our loving, nourishing God, who like a mother knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go and comforts us in time of need. We praise you, God. You are the source and sustainer of life. Join me as we say the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for today, for Mother's Day. O oh God, you give us the sun as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, so that we bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel as written by St. John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
church and the role that it plays in one's life ebbs and flows like a river and can very much change throughout one's lifetime. At times, it can be a swift and moving current, and at other times, a battling brook. Occasionally, it can become a trickle of water, but nevertheless, it is always there. As I think about my early life in the church, I remember Sunday school, in these rather ugly, big, huge brown curtains dividing up one massive room into smaller classrooms. These U-shaped tables surrounded by teeny tiny chairs, sticker charts on walls, and these wooden carts that stored the materials needed to bring my favorite Bible stories to life. As an adult now, I look back with gratitude at the efforts required by my mom to get us there each Sunday morning. As growing up, we only had one vehicle and my dad was a shift worker. As a mom now who simply hops in my own car and turns the key, I've never had to plan in a few hours, let alone a few days ahead to ensure that we got to church on time. My mom's commitment to the church was incredibly strong. Growing up in the church, I learned about the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and countless Bible verses. I could retell many Bible stories. I grew up knowing about a loving and caring God, one that I wanted to be my best me for. After two years of confirmation classes, I was considered a full member of the church. In other words, I could have communion. At that time, I also participated in the youth group. And then it happened. The river that at one time been so full of life had slowed to become a babbling brook. As I was finishing up university, my relationship with the church had almost all but dried up. At this time, I became aware that though I had no brick and mortar church to call my home, I still had my relationship with God. Yes, it had changed. It was more of a trickle of water, but he was with me. We didn't have our weekly Sunday dates at church, but we did talk through prayer. He still inspired me to be my best me. When Roland and I were pregnant with Caleb, we knew that, or I knew that, I wanted to bring Caleb up in the church. I had such fond memories of Sunday school, vacation Bible school, confirmation classes, church camps, youth groups, and friends that I had made through the church. I wanted the same for Caleb. I still remember for the first time coming to St. George's. I was so nervous. I was almost dreading it the night before. I remember carrying in Caleb in his little car seat carrier and being greeted at the door by two kind people. I remember the laughter coming from up the stairs and I later learned about the, the coffee hour before church. But most importantly, I remember the kindness that everyone showed Caleb and I. That day, I knew we were home. It wasn't long until that little trickle of water that at one time some may have worried would dry up completely had met with more water it had suddenly become a gently flowing stream. Watching Caleb become baptized, attend Sunday school classes, read readings and prayers, both in person and now online, create his own job as bell ringer and become a server, once again changed the flow of the river. God has been a part of my life ever since I can remember. And I have my mom to thank. I believe that having God in my life either as a river, stream, brook, or even as a trickle, has encouraged me to be my best me. My hope is that Caleb will grow up knowing about a kind, compassionate God who cares for him, all people, and the earth. And that in turn, Caleb will pass this gift of knowing about God to his child someday. Since Melissa has recently joined our family, we look forward to embarking on her journey to know and love God. Our hope is very much the same for her. May knowing about God and his love for us inspire us each day to do a little bit better than the day before. May each of you go out into the world and be the best you. J
joy of our days. We thank story of God as we offer our praise. You give us our big watch all that we do. And we recognize mother and father in you. Hi. I'm speaking to you today as a mother who raised my children in the church and also as a person who was raised in the church myself. My mom and dad started off at St. Luke's and my dad's mother was in the choir at St. Luke's and I'm sure my mother was also in the choir and dad must have been very involved because they and a group of their friends um, started St. Christopher's and it was originally started in a small schoolhouse at the corner of Guelph Line and the QEW. And I was a youngster, maybe three years old. And I remember Sunday school was in the basement and it was scary down there. There was a big furnace with big arms, but it, I went and um, while we were at that church, the um, group was building the St. Christopher's on Guelph Line where it is now. And it was started in a small, building and mom was in the choir. They belonged to the married couples group and dad was a warden and uh, all of us, my three brothers and myself were involved as children and as youth. And um, it was a, a family. My mom was on the altar guild with some of her friends um, and Lena and um, you may remember meeting my friend Janet from the States and it was her mother um, and my mother and some other ladies that were on the altar guild and uh, the whole church was just a big community and I felt welcome and part of that church as I was growing up. And then a group of mom, mom and dad and a group of their friends moved to um, open up St. Philip's and I was 13 years old when it was started and I was learning how to be on the altar guild. It was a huge undertaking to build St. Philip's and I remember it being built and the footings and as it grew and, and what it was. And all of my mom and dad's friends were part of St. Philip's and St. Christopher's. It was the whole community was our family. Like, it, it's hard to explain. We would go to the picnics and uh, everything was so involved. Everybody was involved. And mom and dad were involved. My mom, again, was on the altar guild. She and I were on the, in the choir at St. Philip's. And I grew up and I got married and had children and my children were baptized at St. Philip's. I was in the uh, nursery for a while with them and then moved up to a Sunday school teacher with them. And my dad was a warden, I don't know how many times, and I became a warden. It was important that my children feel comfortable and part of the community at St. Philip's the way that I always had at St. Christopher's. I'm hoping that they did. There was a while there at St. Philip's where I moved away from the church. My mom had been ill and when she passed, I stopped going for a while. It was too hard. She was everywhere at St. Philip's. Everywhere you looked, there was part of her, whether it was the linens on the altar guild or the hangings. She was a part of the women's group and uh, I think she made me feel that I wanted to be part of that as well. So when St. Phillips closed, and that was after the death of my husband, Tony, dad and I were searching for a church and we found St. George's and I'm so happy to be there. I feel that I belong there and I know that my children feel that way too. You may not see them as often as I would like, but they feel that St. George's is part of theirs. 
my grandchildren feel comfortable there. And I think it's important that we continue the community that we have built up at St. George's. It's a, a wonderful church and the wonderful people. And I hope that you have enjoyed my little talk today. I'm Vanessa Slack, and it's my honor to be one of the voices reflecting with you today for our Mother's Day service. I wanted to share a couple of things. A craftsman who was uh, working on very fine detailed um, wood carving of a bird. And this bird was gonna be placed in such a way that your average attendee at this cathedral would probably never notice it. It was gonna be under the roof and supposedly an onlooker came and said, why are you putting all that time into that little bird that no one's gonna see? And the craftsperson said, because God sees. And I thought about, again, motherhood and mothering and how we do so many little things that are often unnoticed, but God sees them. And that gives me comfort. The other reflection I want to offer is about uh, my own upbringing and how it very much aligns with uh, Reginald Bibby, who was a Canadian, is a Canadian sociologist, often uh, known for tracking religious trends in Canada. And his research suggests that it is the faith of the mother uh, that will dictate, inform the culture of religion in the home. And when I heard of his research and studied it, I learned that that has been my experience for sure growing up in the Slack household. Uh, many of you know my mom and you knew my dad and they were very faithful church attendees and faithful Christians. Um, but on an average Sunday morning, Dwayne Slack would get himself ready and find his way out to the car and wait while my mom, in behind closed doors, had wakened us, probably made our breakfast, encouraged us to get organized, put out various uh, fires around teenagers struggling with hair and what to wear and is the laundry done, as we scrambled our way to the front pew of St. George's in the 80s. Wow. I mean, my mom did all that so that we would have an upbringing in a Christian community. Again, my dad wanted that for us, but that was not his role in our house. And I think also about high holy days, you know, and for Christians, those days are typically Christmas and Easter, and they're full of memories around food and gatherings, but their focus is faith. And my mom made those events special for us growing up. And I'm thinking about my own life here with these three boys that Bruce and I are raising. And it appears that, again, Bibby's research is holding true. That although I know Bruce is very much in favor of and wants our family to be engaged in church community, when it comes to encouraging the boys to get that happening, that's a role that's fallen to me. And uh, I haven't resisted that. Lastly, I wanted to just share with you uh, that I came across a lullaby. And I know that fathers sing lullabies to their babies, but my image of most familiarity is of a mother singing a lullaby and and so this is actually a song written by the Dixie Chicks 
And I'm going to share just a couple of the lines with you, but I just encourage you as well as to encourage myself to expand our view of God to include attributes that are not just around father and fathering, but that would include attributes around being a mother and mothering. And I imagine um, God singing these words to us, to me, in the same way that I would sing them to my sons and that my mom surely would sing them to me and to Susan and to Edward. Let me share them with you now and, uh, and I'll close with that. How long do you want to be loved? Is forever enough? Is forever enough? How long do you want to be loved? Is forever enough? Because I'm never, never giving you up. Oh, heavenly presence, when I am not whole, to my broken spirit and bandage my soul, and stay by my side till I'm fit to walk free, and still be a mother and father. Dear friends in Christ, we gather in the presence of God in humility and have the opportunity to see ourselves as God sees us. Let us offer to God those areas of our lives that are in need of forgiveness and healing. Most merciful God, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, forgive what we have been, accept us as we are, and guide what we shall be. Amen. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Jesus, we thank you for all the mothers and the grandmothers around the world and all they do for their children. We thank you for their patience when we don't get things right. And we thank you for their encouragement when life is hard. We pray that moms will feel special today and that you would remind us every day to show them as much love and help as they give us. Thinking of some biblical moms, Sarah and Elizabeth, who are yearned for a child, Rachel weeping for her children, and Mary, the mother of our precious Savior. We pray for the sick and the infected, sustain their bodies and their spirits, protect the vulnerable, the elderly, the poor, and those with chronic disease. We pray for the young and strong. Give them the necessary caution to keep from spreading this virus. We pray for all governments. Help them to allocate the proper and necessary resources. We thank you for the scientific community for leading the charge on vaccine implementation. We pray for those with mental health challenges, the isolated, the anxious, the helpless, and the homeless, and a special shout out to those mothers who have lost children. We pray for workers who must go to work and who face layoffs and financial challenges. For families working from home and supporting their children's schooling at the same time, and especially for single parents who need networks of support. For those in need of therapies and treatments that must now be postponed. And we pray and are thankful for the ministries and church ministers and church leaders having the challenges of services and working dil diligently each week to put these services online. God, we trust that you are good and do good. Teach us to be your faithful service servant in this time of global crisis. And in closing, I want to repeat some familiar words. May the road rise up to meet you. 
May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face. The rains fall softly on the fields. And until we meet again next week, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let's join together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Mother in Christ, you took my form, offering me your food of light, a grain of life and grape of love, your very body for my peace. Mother in spirit, nurturing one, in arms of patience, hold me close, so that in faith I root and grow, until I flower, until I know. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. We close our service with a prayer of blessing. May the nurturing love of our creator, who is a mother to us, enfold us. The wisdom of Jesus, our brother and friend, enlighten us. The fire of the spirit who lives in us, enflame us. And the many blessings of the three in one God rest on us now and evermore. Amen. Go forth in the love of God to spread love to everyone you meet. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>